Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, Shinrin, Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Friday, November 3rd, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. We were waiting for the eruption to happen on Iceland, but there has been a slowdown. A massive seismic swarm, the largest since the beginning here, and uplift is continuing. So we're waiting for Iceland to erupt. Keep calm. It's boom time. A new map is revealing who could see more snow this winter during the strong El Nino. And here's the map. Areas in blue will see elevated average snowfall, while areas in brown will see less. And it's looking like the Four Corners region are going to get a much-needed reprieve from the lingering drought, as well as the Sierras, heavy snow coming to the Sierras, as well as the Mid-Atlantic. Take a look at that, and maybe even northeastern Maine. It's insane. So heed the warnings and be prepared, not scared. As we take a quick look at the snowpack map, most regions in green and purple are looking good. Regions in red, yellow, and orange need some help. Overall, the snowpack is looking mostly fine. As we take a quick look at the GFS model, it's showing the multiple wintry systems will be moving into the Pacific Northwest and moving over uh, the top of the country time and time again. This is going to bring snow to the upper elevations in most of the U.S. Let's take a look. Here's heavy snow moving into Canada. Uh, through the weekend into Monday morning, we should see some snow in northern Maine. Uh, then during the week, we'll see snow, heavy snow in the high elevations of west of the Rockies. And then a system moving into the northeast here Thursday and Friday of next week could be bringing the first heavy snow to the region. Here's the full forecast. Heavy rain and high winds for the Pacific Northwest. Warmer temperatures returning to some of the U.S. A series of fronts will bring multiple rounds of heavy rain. Rainfall across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies over the next few days. Strong winds associated with these fronts may result in isolated wind damage for the areas. Pacific air is expected to move east across the country this weekend. And as a result, the Great Plains and Midwestern regions will see some warmer temperatures. But the Northern Hemisphere snow mass is at record levels, 250 gigatons above the 1982 to 2012 average. What does that mean? It means that the global warming scare, the fact that Al Gore told us that we would never see snow as of now, shut up, Al, get your hole. Well, he was wrong, and that's why he's in his hole. The actual North American snow mass has been above the multi-decadal average going all the way back to 1981 for three years running. And there is something to be said about that now, isn't there? As we move over to the seismic update, the only quakes of note are here on Iceland, 4.6. And we did have a rumbler here in Nepal earlier today. No injuries reported, just a 5.6 in Joomla. And we do have an interesting quake here in Greece coming in at 5.1. Overall, all is quiet on the Western Front. Let's dump in to the volcanoes. Kluchyskov, one of the largest eruptions for decades over there, probably VEI 3, 4. Lahars cut two roads off, which are mud flows. They started to form as lava flows on the northern flank, melted snow and ice, and caused Lahars to travel along the Studenoy River, and that caused flooding. And so we have some pictures here. This was once a road, which now appears to be a river filled with mud. So Kluchyskov also affecting the sunsets in the West. And a lot of people are getting wonderful pink sunsets on the West Coast, including here in Pagosa Springs. Now, Kluchyskoy or Kluchyskov has an uh, interesting eruptive history. It does erupt at VEI-4 pretty regularly. The last VEI-4 in 1986 and prior to that, it was just a few decades earlier in 1931. Yeah, so about every five decades, this baby goes boom in a big way. And we are right at that threshold. I would expect us to be picking up on a VEI-4 eruption at this point. 
Now, volcanic unrest is continuing on the Rakhianis Peninsula, around 800 earthquakes in the area just yesterday, which is a major uptick as Iceland's Blue Lagoon is on alert for magma flows after the ongoing seismic swarm. The uplift has increased to double our last report, which was just 48 hours ago, and there have been 5 to 6 centimeters of uplift in the last 10 days, which is quite exceptional almost never has been recorded in modern time. So we are definitely waiting for the next imminent eruption on Iceland. And there you can see that seismic swarm over the last 24, 30 hours. Massive, with many of the quakes uh, above three magnitudes. So this is indicative of maybe a rupture forming any time now at the surface. And if you want to stay tuned with the latest updates from Iceland itself, Just Icelandic has a thermal drone and the best footage of the eruption and the location of that Magma accumulation around here would it's going to be occurring right here in this region just uh east and south of the blue lagoon which is right here so this region is where most of that uplift is occurring so go check out just icelandic give them a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't and tell them diamond sent you as we wait for the eruption on iceland shishalden is spectacularly erupting over the last 30 hours with a paroxysm over 30,000 feet. Here you can see the uptick beginning what appears to be about six hours ago, and it is still happening now. Shishaldin activity continuing at reduced levels, but still to the 20, 30,000 foot level. So a Shishaldin eruption is also ongoing as we wait for an eruption from Iceland, following the Kluchiskov boom. Whew, a lot going on. As we take a look at space weather over here at Solar Ham for November 4th, you can see the sun has been quiet for most of the last 24 hours. Almost nothing happening during Solar Max. We are waiting for a massive coronal hold, number 67, to face Earth probably tomorrow. And within two, three days from then, I'll say Sunday, we should be seeing effects from this coronal hole. We also had a filament eruption. Let's take a quick, quick look at that. Here you can see the filament destabilizing and shooting off into space, most of it being sucked back down to Earth. But there was, in fact, a halo element to the coronal mass ejection, which means that it's shooting out in all directions there. You can see it, a halo all the way around. And we are facing that halo, which means there is going to be an Earth-directed component. How significant? Well, we can only guess. Neither of the endless spirals have been updated, but as soon as we get the updates, we will share them with you. Now, long presumed to have no heads at all, starfish may be nothing but heads. This is a breaking news coming from physics.org. For centuries, naturalists have puzzled over what might constitute the head of a sea star or other objects commonly known as starfish. And in fact, the conclusion is that the entire starfish is the head. They have no body, the exact opposite of what was once thought true. The article will be linked below. As we move on to some more woke science or ornithological society to rename dozens of birds and stop naming them after people. You know why? Because some of the people that name these birds are racists. Yes, I said it and it couldn't be the dumber than anything I've ever read in my entire life. Who cares who the people that found these birds were? Who cares who they were? They're the scientists that discovered them. I don't care if they, they killed their whole family. The whole point is the historical significance of the discovery. And our society is crumbling around us, in case you haven't seen, by the nature of these people that have been brainwashed to realize that everything is racist. When it's not. Uh, but this is how the world wor will end, and it won't be wokeism or communism, apparently. Scientists warn of a rare type of space explosion that could eradicate life on Earth for thousands of years. 
but this scenario is more ridiculous than anything ever proposed. If two neutron stars or a neutron star and a black hole collide, it would cause a kilonova and we would all die. The only problem is there's no neutron stars or black holes in existence. They're all fairy tales created by lowbrow cosmologists in our current low-end epic. And if you want to know more about the fact that we're idiots, just coming out of the Kali Yuga, which is the time of idiots, tune in tomorrow on Revolution Radio, where we will discuss in Studio B at 12 noon the cosmic clock cycle, the great year, the Yuga cycle, and we'll break it down for you in layman's terms what it all means. Why was there no language back here 6,000, 8,000 years ago? Well, it's because we were psychic and we had no need for it. Language is for idiots. And why were we, why did we have orthodontics over here in the Dwarpa, but we lost that? We didn't know anything about dentistry for all this time and we just rediscovered it. Well, you can learn all of these enigmas tomorrow. And we will also give you information on the cosmic catastrophes that occur on this flexure point right here that we are all now living. Holy macaroni. Revolution Radio Studio B here tomorrow noon mountain time. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our content in one place commercial free. Most importantly, be safe. We love you. The shit is about to hit the fan. Be prepared, not scared. And join us tomorrow on Revolution Radio and Studio B, 12 noon mountain, to discuss cosmic catastrophes controlled by the procession of the equinoxes. Yeah.